And so uh, sometimes that's what we do. We start majoring on the minors and, uh, and we get ourselves in trouble. But I want to read the entire chapter, and I'm not going to teach on the whole entire chapter tonight, uh, but I want to read it because I have a feeling that I may be coming back to this chapter again with some more, uh, some more thoughts. So let's start at verse 1 in chapter 16. Everybody have your place, sir. Give me a healthy hallelujah. hallelujah. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And when they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they said it meet and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now I want us to go back to verse 9, and that's where I want to dwell uh, with my thoughts tonight in verse 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Now, the main thought tonight would come from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For Paul said, for we are not ignorant of his, the devil's, devices. And I, I, that's what I want us to think about tonight. I, I want us to be aware of how the devil can trip us up. Now, I studied on this quite a bit this week. And I had studied on it before, but I studied on this quite a bit this week. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven 
devils. And now the debate that was going on that I heard about between some friends was someone had said that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And someone said she was not. And so I guess the debate went on and on, I don't know, for some time. It seemed to be an important issue to them. Now, the thing that we need to do, when Scripture does not give us every detail, there is a reason for that. The reason is, he gives us the points that he wants us to dwell upon. Now, out of Mary Magdalene he had cast seven devils, and he appeared to her after he was risen. Now, we understand that if seven devils is operating in a person, they're not living a sainted life. Okay? Whether or not she was in the prostitution could be debatable. But if you study the history of the city of Mag Magdala, where she had resided, either was born there or had at least resided there for some time. She was considered a resident there. That city had the reputation of being a city of prostitution. So it would have not been uncommon for her to have been involved in that. However, the scripture does not say that she was. The scripture does not say that she wasn't. However, if we understand the devices of the devil, there is a possibility that she was. Because we know the characteristics of the devil, do we not? The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. And that's one of the way of destroys a person's life is to get them involved in a lustful atmosphere and to cause them to be filled with lust. Now, for her, this woman to have seven devils operating in her life, she had to give an inroad to the devil. Now you say, well, oh, how in the world could she do that? Let me tell you, that's really easy. You and I have to be very, very careful. We may not give way to allow the devil to operate fully in our life, but if we're not careful, we'll allow him to use us from time to time. And you know, the only thing that it takes for the devil, the key that it takes for the devil to open the door into your life is pride. Pride's all it takes. All you have to do is get to thinking that you're better or that you know more or that you're somebody within yourself without the Lord and you have given the devil a stronghold and a key to an open door in your life. Pride will open the door for the devil to use you. You may not allow him to ride there all the time, but it will give him an opportunity to use you. Now, when we talk about being devil-possessed, and I wanted to discuss this tonight with you because some people seem to misunderstand. I want to tell you tonight that the devil does not own anything. He does not even own his final home. Jesus has the keys to it. He doesn't even have a key to it. And once that Jesus locks the door, he'll be there forever. Well, glory to God. Let me tell you, the devil does not own anything. So let me give you this illustration of how evil spirits work and the devil works. And I don't want you to dwell a lot on evil spirits. What I want you to do is dwell and on having a relationship with the Lord Jesus, staying humble before God and allowing him to have full control in your life. But I want to share this much with you. Irene and I have an automobile out there. It belongs to us in the ministry. It has the ministry name on it. It has my name on it. It has Irene's name on it. It is legally registered to Irene and I. We license it. We pay taxes on it. We keep it up. We have it inspected. We do all the things that makes it legal for us to drive that vehicle. It is our vehicle by law. Now, if someone should get an opportunity in some way to steal that vehicle, and that's what the thief does, that's what the devil does, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, 
We're going to talk about some of his attributes tonight. And what if somebody should steal that vehicle, they would use it as if it's theirs. And since it's really not theirs, they would not just use it, but abuse it more than likely. And that's what the devil does. He uses people until he can get an inroad to abuse them. And we need to understand that that's how he operates. Now, if somebody steals that vehicle and they drive it down the road until some official can arrest them and stop them and bring that vehicle back to the rightful owner, they're going to use it just like it's theirs. They're going to do what they want to with it. We drive it to the house of the Lord. We haul people to the house of the Lord. We carry food to people that need food. We use that vehicle for the glory of God. And that's how you and I ought to be used is for the glory of God. Are you listening to me tonight? I'm making a point tonight. But let me tell you, if somebody else gets it, they may be hauling moonshine liquor in it. And they may be hauling dope in it. And they may be doing something that is destroying somebody's life. That's exactly how the devil works with human beings. He doesn't own anything, but if he can get an inroad into your life, he will use you to destroy others, and in the end, he will bring destruction into your own life. So now Mary Magdalene had seven devils. I don't know what each one of those evil spirits majored in. You know, the devil's a liar and the father of it. Anybody know that's the words Jesus? He's a liar and the father of it. I don't know if she was a liar. I don't know which spirit was in her. But we know that she had evil spirits operating in her life. I don't know if she was a thief. It could be that she was in such a hard time, she felt like that stealing was the only way that she could survive. Maybe she felt like prostitution was the only way she could survive. I'm not saying she did or she didn't. The scripture doesn't tell us. But I'm saying all of this to get us to understand something. To argue over something that we cannot prove by the word doesn't edify anybody. You can have your opinion. I can have my opinion. Somebody else could have their opinion and two out of three of us could be wrong. But the main thing is, the main thing is, according to Scripture and what he wants us to understand, is this woman had been taken captive by the devil. He was, she was being used and abused by the devil. But one day she met Jesus and deliverance came and the devils went. That's the point we need to dwell on. That's the thing we need to be saying to each other and not dragging up everything in the past but looking to what God has now done and the future that is ahead of us because of the glorious grace of God, of His power and His holiness and His righteousness, that ought to be enough to make us shout and not have to debate over small things. Glory to God. You see, the devil wants to get us off track. You know, and I'm not saying that we can't have conversations. And I'm not saying that we can't disagree about some theory. We can do it in a friendly manner. But when it comes to the point that it starts deteriorating our friendship, and it comes to the point that it starts causing us to have odd feelings towards one another and we're not loving one another like brothers and sisters ought to, then we need to lay it down. Are you listening to me? When it comes to that point, we need to let down. The main thing is that we love God and love one another. How many of you know we've heard that before? Hallelujah. Loving God and loving one another, that's the main thing. Hallelujah. We're going to heaven together. We might as well just have a heavenly mind while we're here and love God and love one another and rejoice in the salvation of the Lord. We're not ignorant now of the devil's devices. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes well-meaning people and uh, the Lord has blessed me to where I don't get too involved in that. You see, I don't know much and he's given me enough sense to know that I don't know much 
so I just don't start arguments. Now, I stand squarely on whatever the Word of God says, and I don't back up. If I'm going to be adamant about a point, it's going to be what God said. What God said. That's what I'm going to be adamant about. Anything else? You have your opinion, I'll have mine. We'll love one another and love God. We'll go to heaven. We'll have a glorious time. And in the meantime, we're going to have a happy time here. We're going to have a happy time here. Did you know that grievous words stir up anger, but a soft answer turneth away wrath? Yes. You know something? My dad was, I mean, he was one of those kind of guys. I loved him, but he was one of those kind of guys. If he got something in his mind, you just might as well leave him alone. So if there was something that I seen different, and I knew that my dad seen it different to what I did, you know what happened? I didn't talk about it. There has been a few times that he pushed me into a corner and he said, well, son, what do you think about this? You know how I answered him? I said, well, dad, the Bible said this in a certain, certain place. And the Bible said this in a certain, certain place. That's what I think about it. It worked good. It worked good. Then the argument was not with me. So there was no argument because it would have had to have been with God. That's a good way to deal with it. We don't need to argue with one another. We don't even need to argue with the devil. And we don't even need to lie on the devil. Do you know some people lie on the devil? We don't need to lie at all. We need to tell the truth. Yeah, and the devil's powerful. And I'm not trying to give the devil glory, but I'm telling you that the devil's seeking whom he may devour. He's going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And if you have just a little bit of pride, he's got a key to work with. He's got a key to work with. You know, we should not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And we should not judge anything before it's time. And all things should be yea according to the word of God. And that's where we should stand. Now, you know there could be a whole lot of debates started. <laughs> Jesus done some things that would stir up some people's minds. Well, they did. The scribes and the Pharisees got upset real often at him. He healed on the Sabbath day. And you know, I find it amazing. He could have appeared to any one of those disciples that he chose. <laughs> Don't let this blow your mind. Early in the morning on the first day of the week after he had risen, he first appeared unto Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils and told her to go tell Peter and the disciples to meet him over in Galilee as he had already spoken unto them. My, what a message she was told to preach. He is risen! You know, that'll get you all tangled up, don't you think? <laughs> but we just need to stick with the Word. Stick with the Word. It's not about some kind of bylaws in some church some kind of organization that was founded on one scripture taken out of context. It's about staying with the Word of God. Now, I kind of made a list here that I wanted to share with you. And I mentioned pride already because that's the number one key for the devil to work with in your life. But once he gets an inroad in your life, and sometimes it might, these two might be 
first and second or second and third or whatever, they might not be in the same order with every person because every personality is different. But once he gets into your life, he starts trying to operate with greed and lust. And sometimes it works with lust first and greed second. Sometimes it's greed first and lust second. But anyway, those are the kind of things that he works with. Jealousy and envy and rioting. And by the way, just to let you know where I stand, all of this stuff that's been going on across our country is instigated by the devil. The rioting that's going on, the stealing, the burning, the killing, the looting. Yes. And all of this rioting, it is instigated of the devil. Yes. Because they're out to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the attributes of the devil. That is not a godly thing. So we need to understand that the devil is raging even in our country. We need to be, we need to be knowledgeable of the devil's devices. Those things are what the devil does. So many are being taken captive by him at his will because they have allowed pride and greed and lust and jealousy and envy to enter into their hearts. And then what they do, they start lying, stealing, destroying, murmuring, and trying to rule by intimidation. Huh? Are you getting an idea who the devil is? You need to know who he is. He's your enemy. He's the enemy of your soul. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy friendships. He's trying to destroy families. He's trying to destroy our nation. He wants to destroy the world. He wants to destroy every soul in the world because he hates what God loves, and God loves the souls of men better than anything in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. I had to preach there just a little bit. It's enough to get you excited. Now, I don't know what sinful acts Mary Magdalene was involved in, but I know the devil had her captive, and I know that Jesus delivered her. The point is, no matter where you've been and what you've done, if you'll come to Jesus, he still saves, even from the guttermost to the uttermost. He still saves. He still delivers. He still sets free. I don't care how many demons you have had. You know, the one in the country of the Gadareans that was called Legion. Did you know that Legion represents anywhere from three to 6,000 soldiers? So he could have had thousands of evil spirits operating in him because they were destroying him and separated him. He wore no clothes. He cut himself. He was in the tombs crying. He couldn't find any deliverance until Jesus showed up and he ran to the feet of Jesus and began to worship and he was delivered of them all. I don't know if they was 3,000 I don't know if they were 6,000. The scripture does not say, but legion represents in the Roman terms that many. So I'm saying to you, the important thing is that Jesus still is in charge. He's still in control. And all of the minute details, just leave it to him and let him be Lord. Let him be in charge and give him glory and giving praise. I know this has been a little bit different tonight, but I just felt like that since I'd heard of this happening, that that's one thing I needed to warn you of, that it doesn't happen here with us. 
We're going we're gonna to grow up. We're going to be too big for the devil to trip us up with such minute things as debating over things that we cannot clarify. All right? All right? If the word of God says it, say yea and amen to it. But if you can't clarify it by the word, let your opinion be your opinion and somebody else's opinion be their opinion, okay? All right. We're going to have a glorious time going to heaven, amen? We're going to have a glorious time.